Today, we're going to talk about an unusually difficult problem. This problem, divide an array into subarrays with minimum costs, come from bi-weekly contest number 122 last weekend. As you can see, it has a score of 7, which is unusually high even for the fourth question of a bi-weekly contest. And if you click into the description, you'll see that its acceptance rate is a staggering 11%. Today, we are going to talk about the solution to this problem, and I'm going to throw in some bonus at the end about data structures, uh, lists, insertion, and deletions work in Python. So open up your browser and code along with me. This is Alex Does Lead Code. Before we begin, if you like my content, remember to like and subscribe my channel. This helps you get notified every time I put out new content, whether it's a programming contest live stream or one of my other, uh, or one of my other videos. Let's get going. As usual, let's start by reading the question. In this question, we have given three things, an integer array, nums, and two positive integers, k and this. Additionally, we define the cost of an array as the value of its first element. So the cost of 1, 2, 3 is 1, and the cost of 3, 4, 1 is 3. Our task is to divide m nums into k contiguous subarrays, such that the difference between the starting index of the second subarray and the starting index of the k subarray should be less than or equal to this. We then have to return the minimum possible sum of the costs of these subarrays. This is a confusing description to say the least. So, let's look at an example. In example one, we want to divide the array. 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, 2 into three subarrays with no more than three distance apart. One division of this array might look like this. The cost of this division would be the sum of the first element of each of the subarrays, which is 1, 2, and 2, giving us a total cost of 5. We can verify that this is a valid division of subarrays because the start of the second subarray and the start of the last subarray is no more than this units apart. Let's try example two. A possible solution for example two will look something like this. We can verify that this is a valid subdivision by checking that the distance between the second and the last uh, subarray is no more than three distance apart. The total cost of this subdivision will be 10 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2, giving us 15. Note that the alternative division of 10, 1, 2, 2, 2, and 1, even though it's cheaper, is actually not valid because the distance between the second subarray and the last subarray now becomes 5 which is more than distance 3. Now, as I'm working through these examples, I suddenly realize two things. One, we don't care about the subarrays at all. All we need is their first element. In fact, we never actually do the division. We never actually divide the array into subarrays. We just calculate the sum of the first element of each subarray. Second observation is that the very first subarray always starts at item number zero. There's no way around it. You have to have an item on the left in the first subarray. With these two ideas, we can now reframe the problem. Rather than thinking of the problem as dividing subarrays, since we only care about the first item, we're essentially picking array items. We're picking items that basically correspond to the head of each subarray except we never actually divide the array. All we do is to pick the head of the subarrays and then sum up their values. Since the first subarray must always start at item zero, we can essentially drop that from our array and pick k minus one items from the rest of the array. With the caveat that the distance between the first, not the second, of these k minus one items is no more than these distance from the last item. This now reduces to a classic sliding window problem where each window is of size this and its value is the sum of the k smallest numbers within that window. We now slide the window throughout the whole array to find the window with the smallest sum. 
Now, we could calculate the smaller sum manually for each window separately, but instead, we want to keep, take advantage of the fact that the difference between adjacent windows is only one element. Starting with the leftmost window, we collect all the numbers in the window and sort them. We then select the k smallest items, as indicated by the blue zone, and then sum them. So 1 plus 3 plus 6 gives us 10. Now, when we slide the window one step to the right, we notice that the only difference is we removed the leftmost item from the previous window and add a new item. This means that we don't have to change most of the numbers in our list. Instead, we use binary search to figure out where to delete and insert those two new numbers. Now, it's important to use binary search because bear in mind the window can be extremely huge and we don't want a linear time complexity at this stage. We also don't have to recalculate the sum. Instead, because we know that we removed the number 1 from the blue zone, the sum is now reduced by 1, and we added the number 5 to the blue zone, we add 5 to the sum. This gives us 10 minus 1 plus 5 equals 14. Again, this is really important if the window is extremely huge. If the window is 10,000 items, for instance, we will essentially be doing adding two numbers instead of 9,998. And now when we slide the window one more step to the right, we again repeat this process. Notice in this case, 7 is removed and 8 is added. Since neither of these numbers are inside the blue zone, the sum remains 14 we don't have to do that a linear summation again. We repeat this until we get to the end of the array and we find the window with the smallest sum. And finally, we're now ready to put it all into code. We start by restating the problem. As mentioned before, we use first to remember the very first item in the list. And after that, we can safely delete first. We can also make k small, one smaller than it started off as. Now we are ready to solve the sliding window problem. We start with the leftmost window. We extract the first window from the left hand side of nums. We sort it. We now define two variables, best and current, to store the value of the sums. Best is the best sum we've seen so far, and current is the sum of the k smallest items in the current window. Now we want to start sliding the window. We use i as an index to keep track of the next item to add on the right hand side of the current window. I will start from this plus one and goes all the way to the end of the array. Now let's remove the old item from the left window. We then look up this item in the current window and we're going to use a fancy function called bisect. Specifically, we're going to use bisect left. What bisect left does is it runs a fine binary search to find the, the leftmost value of occurrence of old. Now we delete this item from window. And here's the tricky part. We have to update the current sum. We check if old index is inside the blue zone. then we move old from current. If it's outside the blue zone, then of course the current sum remains unchanged. Furthermore, if the length of the window is larger than k minus 1, furthermore, if the length of the window is larger than k minus 1, this means 
that an additional new element has has entered the blue zone since O index has left it. And we want to add this to the current total. So similarly, now we add the new item from the new window. This is just nums i. And we, just like before, want to look up the index using bisect. In this case, we use bisect right because it's a little bit faster for what we want to do. We insert this into the window. Just like before, we are going to update the current sum based on the whether this new index falls into the blue zone. If it does, then we're going to add new to current. And if this new uh, item going to this blue zone displaces the last item that was there before, then we're going to replace it. Finally, we're going to update best. If current is smaller than best, if the current sum is be better than the be best we've seen so far, then best equals to current. The last thing we need to do is to remember to add first, which is the value of our very first item zero back into the answer. Let's press the submit button. And we can see our submission has been accepted. It beats 22.78% of users, which is sort of okay, uh, but it beats almost everybody in terms of memory. So we have a very memory efficient solution. Now, the last thing I want to briefly talk about is the time performance of delete and insert. So during the original discussion, I said that using a, a binary search would help us ensure that we have log n time within this O n loop. However, it turns out that it's not exactly true because after we do the, the bisect, the bisect itself is very fast, but insertion and deletion of a list item is still technically speaking O n. Because if you imagine, if you insert something at position five, you need to move. Because as you imagine, if you have a list of length 10 and you insert something at position five, you're going to move everything from six all the way to 10, one step to the right. This is going to take some time. Now, thankfully, Python's in a list insertion is extremely efficient. I'm not super sure how it works. Um, I'm, I'm not extremely... I'm not entirely sure how it works under the covers, but when I tested this, this is a lot faster. I believe, thankfully, Python's list insertion and deletion are extremely fast. Thankfully, Python's list insertion and deletions are extremely fast. I don't know exactly how they work under cover. I think there are some heuristics. Um, if any of the viewers know, feel free to, to leave it in the comments and, and share it with the rest of us. But I will show you if instead of doing a deletion, what you want to do is you just create a new, we create a new list. Like this, then this would give you the correct answer, but it is going to run out of time on the larger and more complex problems. Let's run it.
As you can see, this passed 688 out of 691 test cases, which means my guess is that this actually produced the correct answer, the same answer as the one as the version before, except that on very large cases like this one, as you can see, this test case has an extremely large input. You're going to run out of time. You are going to run out of time. The same thing happens if you replace insertion with something slower. This is actually even slower because it filled one test case before. Again, it passed 687 out of 691 test cases, which tells me my suspicion is it gives you the correct answer, except that it's too slow. So what I've learned from this is always use delete and insert where you can. They're much faster than doing this, which is something that a lot of Python programmers like to do. So that's it. That's how you crack today's unusually difficult lead code problem with a staggering 11% acceptance rate. Once again, if you enjoy my content, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps out small content creators like me a whole bunch. Plus, you'll get notified every time I have a new video or a live stream of the lead code contest. Hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.